deliver them that make me see it and be put to shame. For thou, Lord, hast helped me and comforted me. Word can be a sign for good, and let them that hate me see it and be put to shame. For thou, Lord, hast helped me and comforted me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the days. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 glory to your God. Hallelujah, 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 glory to your God. Hallelujah, 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 glory to be your God. Lord, mercy, Lord, and mercy, Lord, and mercy. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. From the seal tomb, thou didst shine forth with light, and close forth thou dost come to thy disciples of Christ God, renewing us through them in upright spirit, by the greatness of, of thy mercy, O resurrection of all. Now and ever are to raise the babies, Amen. O God, O God, who for our sakes was born of the virgin, for the virgin who did suffer crucifixion, O good one who did spoil death by death, and as thou art this fruit to be the resurrection, despise not that which thou hast made with thy hand, show forth thy love for, 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 for mankind, O oh, merciful one, receive the faith of those who bore thee, and who is praying for us, and save thy despairing people, O oh, our Savior. Give, give us not up unto thee for thy own sake, neither break thy covenant, nor cause thy mercy to depart from us. For the sake of Abraham, thy, thy beloved, and for the sake of Isaac, thy servant, and, and the sake of Israel, thy holy one, holy God, holy mighty, holy most of mercy in us, holy God, holy mighty, holy most of mercy in us, holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy in us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us, Lord, cleanse us from our sins, not from our transgressions. Holy One, visit and hear our infirmities for the name's sake. For the mercy, Lord, mercy, Lord, mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Be blessed the day, the earth is our debts, as we do thy debtors. And ye have done temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Lord, I the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to ages of ages. Amen. That Thomas touched thy life, giving sight with eager hand, with an eager mm -hmm. hand, O Christ, O Christ God, when thou didst come to thy, thy apostles through closed doors, he cried out of all, Thou art my Lord and my God.
and are not going to lift up our eyes and look upon the heights of heaven, in, inasmuch as we have forsaken the path of thy righteousness, and have walked after the desires of our own hearts, when we entreat that thy boundless of goodness spare us, O Lord, according to the most sure of thy mercy, and save us for, that, for thy holy name's sake, for, for our days have been consumed, and vanity plucked, plucked out of, of the hand of, of the adversary to give us our sins, and mortify our fleshly desires of having put off the old man who looks upon the new, and may live unto the, the to be our master and benefactor, and that so following that thy commandments we may attain unto the rest eternal, where, where is the abode of all, all, who, all who rejoice. For thou art in that in the verity, the true joy and exaltation of those who love thee. O Christ our God, in the thee we offer glory together with thy Father, who is without beginning, and thy most holy good, my praying spirit, now and ever on the way to the ages. Amen. Blessed is our God, always now and after the two ages of ages. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. Christ is risen from the dead, Trampling down death by death. And upon those in the dirt, be so we lie. Come, let us worship God our King. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ our King and our God. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ Himself our King and our God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O my God, our very great God. Fill thyself with praise and honor. Fill thyself with life with the garments, breaking out the heavens. Who guards the chamber of water to make the father's chair to walk in the wings of the wind to make the things of spirits of ministers of flame and fire? Who saps with the earth on her sure foundation and shall not be moved forever? The deep as it were a garment is discovered, and the water shall stand on the hills. At thy rebuke they shall sleep the voice of thy thunder, they shall be alarmed. They go up to the mountains and down to the plains, to the place which thou hast found for them, thou hast set a bound, which they shall not pass, neither shall they turn again to cover the earth. He sends forth his fountains among the valleys, the water shall run between the mountains. They shall give drink to all the wild beasts of the field, the wild asses shall take of them to quench their thirst. By them shall the birds of the sky lodge, they shall utter voice of the midst of the rocks. He waters the mountains from his chamber. The earth shall be sent by the fruit of thy work. He makes bread to grow for the cattle, being heard for the service of men to bring bread out of the earth. And wine may fly the heart of men to make his face cheerful with the woman bread strengthen man's power. The trees of the plant shall be full of sap, even the seeds of Lebanon which he has planted. That the sparrow shall build their nest in the house of land and take the lead among them. The high mountains are a fish for the stag, the rock for the rabbit, the appointed the moon for season. The sun will be thrown down. Thou hast made darkness and with night, and all wild beasts of the forest will be abroad, even young lions growing for prey and seeking for themselves from God. The sun arises and they shall be gathered together, and shall lie down in their den. And man shall go forth to his work and to his labor, shall be eating how great thy works, O Lord, and with them hast thou brought them all. The earth is filled with thy creation. Though of this great and wide sea, there is things creeping in the of small animals and great. There go the ships and the dragon of the house made to play, and all the way upon the deep give them their food in this season. When thou hast given it, then they will gather it, and when thou hast opened thy hand, they shall all be filled with good. But when thou hast turned away thy face, they shall be troubled, thou wilt take away their bread, and they shall fail and return to their dust. Thou shalt send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let the glory of the Lord be forever, the Lord shall rejoice in his works, who looks upon the earth, and makes the tremble, such as the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing the Lord of all that live, I will sing praise to my God, and my food. Let my meditation be sweet to him, and I will rejoice in the Lord. Let the sinners stay open off the earth and transgress it, so that they shall be no more blessed the Lord, my soul. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, great and great. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to you, God. Amen.
so my persecutions for the earth come from me. Bring my soul out of prison on me. Thanks to thy name, the light is full of me. The Bible do bound to serve me. Out of the depths I cry to thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice and come here to be attentive to the voice of my supplication. Give thy O Lord, to the mark and the O Lord, Lord, to his hand. But there is forgiveness to thee.
unto thee, to his of glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to ages of ages. Amen. Peace be unto all. And to and submissively incline their necks, awaiting not help from men, but entreating thy mercy, looking confidently for thy salvation. God will at all times, both during this present evening and the approaching night, from every foe, from all adverse powers of the devil, and from vain thoughts, and from evil imaginations. Bless and glorify be the might of thy kingdom, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy. 
mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Lord, thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to ages of ages. Oh 
true God, who has risen from the dead, through the prayers of his most pure mother, the Holy Ghost, honorable apostles of our Father among the saints, Nicholas, the one who worked, Archbishop of Myra and Nicaea, of the Virgin Mother of Lycaria, whose memory we keep this day, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, the protectors of this holy community and city and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us for his good and loves mankind. Christ is risen. Indeed. Christos and Esti. Christos was Christ. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling the dead by death, and the bottles in the tomb be so we fly. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling the dead by death, and the bottles in the tomb be so we fly. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling the dead by death. Our personal 
uh, experience of the resurrected Lord. We are not uh, reliant upon others' faith that they can uh, confess for us. Uh, what we as full-grown adult Christians can uh, confess in our own faith as Thomas, my Lord and my God. And the reason why we're able to confess this faith, why uh, we are able to then uh, cry out, my Lord and my God, uh, about, is because we've heard the apostolic message, that he revealed himself to particular people in his resurrection, as we uh, see in 1 Corinthians 15 and throughout uh, the end of the Gospels, and especially we hear about this in Paul's epistles, uh, that we are grafted in, just like in Acts 2 and throughout, as we're reading right now, the book of Acts, the early apostolic preaching and teaching that spreads throughout the world. The tradition around St. Thomas, since we're in St. Thomas, is that he was the one to go to India and to spread the gospel in India. So there is the personal aspect of our faith, but then there's the ecclesial aspect of our faith, that we are shaped, that we are formed uh, by God's people. It's not something that we just pursue on our own. There is an aspect, of course, of our own personal pursuit of our Lord, but it's always a communal component, not just as a kind of a gathering of fellowship where we individually encourage each other, but there is, as we see in the book of Acts, there's already structure, just like they have the 12 apostles, then you have the 70 disciples, then you have others who have different roles that they're playing in our Lord's ministry. So in the church, everyone has an aspect and part of that ministry. We see this even with the Apostle Paul, who we might think is in some ways the great uh, renegade or the great uh, one especially, I would say, kind of Protestant Christianity, Paul is exalted, which the church also exalts St. Paul. But you notice in the book of Acts, after he has had his Damascus Road experience, that was not enough. He had to be baptized by someone sent by God. He then takes time, if you try to collate Galatians and Acts together, he spends some time off by himself, but what happens in the book of Acts is that he needs to come and be confirmed by the church in Jerusalem by a group of elders, by James, the brother of our Lord, that he is bona fide, as it were, that he is preaching the truth of the gospel, and that he basically has apostolic seal from the early church. There is this ecclesial dimension to our faith because, let's face it, when we're on our own, we... Uh, you hear about the blind leading the blind. Well, to lead yourself is to guarantee blindness and ending up in the ditch because as we would read, finish reading Proverbs, we need those who are wise, those who have been set before us to be able to teach, to correct, to possibly rebuke. The bishops of the church uh, in following after uh, apostolic succession have specific responsibility of teaching the faith, guarding the deposit of truth that has been given to them, and therefore, if there are things that are out of bounds, that there is a word issued, and if there is not a correction, this is where we start talking about heresy, and where we will even have hymnody in a few Sundays. We'll have, on the Sundays of the, four, of the Fathers of the Ecumenical Councils, we will talk about them specifically, because we know uh, and can see how heresy, a deviation from apostolic teaching, which we already see in the New Testament, Acts, Corinthians, Galatians, there's trouble from the very beginning, uh, that there needs to be confirmation from the broader church about teaching. This doesn't necessitate this, and this is can we kind of always get to this point when I'm talking about, okay, so it sounds like we get into this kind of... Um, church bureaucracy or something, right? Like there is some uh, element uh, that is something kind of sterile structure outside of it. And this is kind of a perennial temptation to want to look at that structure and just say, no, I'm going to go, go my own way and do my own thing. But this is not the path that we see of St. Paul. This is not the path 
of the early church. This doesn't mean a turning down of further fervor of faith. It doesn't mean the loss of the ability to maybe even speak prophetically. I mean, we canonized fools for Christ, and they did all sorts of things, not just to uh, emperors or czars, but to uh, bishops, to priests. There are times where there's rebuke that comes from the body of Christ towards someone in that place of authority. And either they listen or they don't. So this is the life of the church, like Israel uh, of old, that we have this living faith that is guarded, protected, uh, but its roots, its foundation, its basic uh, understanding is always, as the fathers have taught, uh, it has to be rooted in the apostolic faith. So let us, this week, and as we continue to celebrate the resurrection, uh, remember, especially uh, as we read the book of Acts, as the lectionary has for us, remembering our great duty and responsibility that we stand, as it were, on the shoulders of giants, and that we are able to proclaim, like the end of the epistle reading from this past Sunday, boldly in the temple or in the public places, when we need to, what the faith of the church is. Christ is risen. Indeed. In just a few moments, uh, we will have, because uh, I think some of the folks who join the Zoom Bible study uh, will or watch this and then switch over to do uh, the Zoom Bible study. That will start here in just a few minutes. Uh, this upcoming weekend, we have a regular schedule of services. Saturday evening with Great Vespers and Sunday morning Divine Liturgy. The Divine Liturgy, uh, as far as I can tell, the weather is going to be perfectly fine this weekend. But we all know that changes, so just be on the lookout if there's an email to change. Uh, there's a few announcements uh, sent out to email today. Uh, one, this was from an email from last week uh, about looking forward to Pentecost and the retirement of our mortgage, and then the burning of that on Pentecost weekend, because that weekend we'll, we will have uh, a full set of services for the weekend, uh, which is already set by the church, but we're just going to take advantage of it because it's a major feast to be able to have our own uh, celebration. Uh, we also have, uh, this is something that was cooked up a week or two ago, and then it's finally kind of formed uh, a father-son uh, slash men of the parish camp out on June, uh, the night of June 11th, I believe it's a Friday night, and then the 12th to you know pack up and then come back for in time for Great Vespers at least uh, at the latest on Saturday evening of the 12th. If there's anybody who is interested in doing that, uh, this is a primitive camp ground uh, at Norris Dam. Uh, if you would like to join us, uh, email Adam Davis. The email link is in the email that went out this afternoon. About Sunday morning, just one last thing, uh, we need uh, folks to be able to help come. We were about 10 minutes late in starting last Sunday uh, just because it just took that more time to set things up because we've got to put, as you can tell, there's nothing out there. We have to put everything up, uh, and it's usually Deacon and I and Logan uh, who end up doing the vast majority of that. Uh, sometimes a few others who come uh, towards the end, uh, but if you're at all available, 8.45, 8.50, uh, even earlier, then that would be great to be able to help us uh, set all that up. Christ is risen. Indeed. <laughs>